of the Kansas City Chiefs organization, 20 point, 21 points down to the Chargers at one point, and they come back to win in overtime. Uh, just remarkable. You, you saw momentum shift. You saw Kansas City start playing better. You saw them run the ball more. Their play-action game come off of it. You saw the defense start to get some energy off of you know the fact that the offense had put some points on the board. And San Diego, the wind got knocked out of their sails in the second half. I really think watching your teammate leave the field crying um, makes you psychologically, whether it's at the front of your mind, whether you're talking about it out loud, you think, oh, man, he's really hurt. And for the rest of that game, until you know what the situation is, I don't care who you are, you're aware on some level of your consciousness that, oh man, my guy's down. He's really hurt. And that's why you can't cry when you get hurt in the NFL. I don't care how bad it hurts. Cry once nobody can see you or put a towel over your head so nobody can see you. Put that thumbs up. Because psychologically for your teammates, for the rest of that game, that does so much more good than what you're going to get out of it on the bad side. Because, like I said, psychologically, the back of their head, they know, oh, man, there's that thought. Oh, man, did you see that? He's crying. He's really hurt. What are we going to do? And those thoughts start creeping into players' heads. And that starts to affect the game plan. It starts to affect the coach. Because now the coach is going, oh, man, Keenan's down. What are we going to do? How are we going to adjust? And they weren't able to. They weren't able to get momentum back. Kansas City had it the rest of the game, and they pulled out the victory. So congratulations for the Kansas City Chiefs. Chargers, I'm sorry. It looks like you're going to have another season where you're competitive, but uh, just not good enough. This call right here, this call was good enough. But had it gone the wrong way, and they don't complete this pass to Michael Crabtree to win the game 35-34 with 47 seconds left in the game, then Jack Del Rio is going to have fans real quick chanting for him to, you know, be fired. But it works out. The Raiders go for two at the end of the game in a back-and-forth shootout where everybody was just throwing the ball up and down the field, big plays all day long, including a 98-yard touchdown to Cooks. No defense was stopping anybody. Both defenses looked pitiful. Carl Joseph, who I picked for defensive rookie of the year, wasn't stopping nobody. He wasn't laying the leather on anybody. Uh, Reggie Nelson looked slow. Khalil Mack, okay, he was out there. Good job. But you give up, what, 34 points? Your defense didn't do good. I don't care what individual stats you have. Your defense gave up 34 points. Your performance was not enough. You did not make anybody better on your team. Now, they went big or they went home. That was the call they were going to make. They were either going to win it or the game was over. Sure, you can go for an onside kick and try and get it back and try and get in position to kick a field goal after that. But what are the percentage chances there? They went big or they went home, and they got it. And that's a big win for the Raiders, who are going to be in a competitive, tight race with the Denver Broncos to win that division this year. And right now, the Raiders look... A lot better on offense than the Broncos. However, the Broncos look a lot better on defense than the Raiders do. So it's kind of a wash right there. It's going to be fun watching those two teams go up against each other this year. And we'll have to see how that uh, that race plays out. You know, I picked Denver to take it. I thought Oakland would come in second in the division. Um, big win today. Keeps them right there 1-0 with the Broncos so far. All right, let's get into today's scores. We'll cover all of today's games. I'll give you a little bit of highlights uh, if something catches my eye about the game or something really happened that was interesting. Um, let's see. Starting with the morning games, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. This game looks closer than it really was. Tampa Bay had their way with Atlanta today, winning 31-24. Then it came back late to score those points in, you know, mop-up time basically where Tampa Bay had taken their foot off their throat and started playing the prevent defense that never prevents anything continue to play the defense that got you up on them in the first place and that will prevent them from scoring that's what you had done the whole game as soon as you switch to a prevent defense teams almost 
always come back, and I can't stand it. The prevent defense needs to go away. Uh, Baltimore all over Buffalo, 19-7. to Mike Wallace had a nice 60-something yard touchdown from Flacco. Uh, Buffalo did not look good today with the brothers Ryan coaching. Houston beat Chicago. This is a game I got a chance to watch most of this game this morning. Brock Osweiler, good numbers. You know, two touchdowns, a pick, 220-something yards. Um, but he was not the impressive part of that offense. The offensive line played well. Uh, Lamar Miller with uh, 100 and, 110, 106, 100-something some, yards rushing today. Um, the young receiver from Notre Dame, he looked great. DeAndre Hopkins did his thing. Braxton Miller could not find his way into the play calling enough today, I don't think, with his skill set. But they'll figure it out. They'll get him involved. The defense looked all right. J.J. Watt didn't do you know too much. Uh, I still think he's trying to come back from the back injury. It didn't look like they monitored his snaps too much. Um, Clowney didn't really do anything except for a play here and there, which if that's all he's going to be, whoopity do. Um and, you know, Chicago just kind of fell apart. Chicago was in it to a point, and uh, the offense got stagnant. It became predictable. Uh, they weren't taking chances, and the defense ended up getting tired, really. And Houston pulls it out 23-14. Next game this morning, Green Bay was in a shootout down in Jacksonville. They ended up winning 27-23. Jordy Nelson with his first touchdown back since the knee injury. Um and Aaron Rodgers picked up another rushing touchdown in the game. And Jacksonville looks solid. Uh, it looks like they're right there getting ready to make the leap, and it could happen this year. You compete with a team like Green Bay and go back and forth uh, the way that game did, it shows promise. And, you know, you never want to build on a loss like that. You never want to be the team who has to say, oh, well, we lost, but we can take this, this, and this away. You want to be able to say, yeah, we won, but we need to work on this, this, and this. At the same time, Jacksonville, good game for you. Uh, Green Bay, another solid outing with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. Uh, we talked about this game final in overtime. Kansas City came back to beat San Diego. Again, Keenan Allen, who's having a good game, until he went out in the second quarter. Melvin Gordon picks up his first two rushing touchdowns in the NFL after not scoring in his rookie contest at all last year. Oakland beat New Orleans like we talked about in five downs, 35-34 with that two-point conversion with 47 seconds left in the game. New Orleans was not able to get anything on the board after that. Cincinnati squeaked one out. We had a lot of close games in the NFL this so far this weekend. Cincinnati beating the Jets 23-22. Again, the highlight there, Jets defense and A.J. Green for sure. Philadelphia beating Cleveland 29-10 behind the rookie Carson Wentz and his great performance. Um, Minnesota and Tennessee. Tennessee, you can't turn the ball over three times and give up two defensive touchdowns to a team that basically had no offense today. Okay, You held Adrian Peterson to a one-point-something per carry average. Sean Hill came out and was solid, didn't make mistakes, but didn't put up a lot of big numbers. Stephon Diggs had his 100 yards receiving, and I should have probably played him, considering Allen went down with an injury, but whatever. Another story, another day. DeMarco Murray had two receiving touchdowns. He did put the ball on the ground once. Derrick Henry had some nice receptions. Um, had Tennessee not had the turnovers, if they don't beat themselves in this game with mistakes, they win the game. But Minnesota, behind a solid stud defense that I've told you guys about, picks up a good win for them in what's going to be a competitive NFC North. Seattle squeaks out a two-point win over Miami, 12-10. Again, with less than 40 seconds left in the game, they score to take the lead. They were down four points, I believe, 10-6 to six at the time that they took the lead. Went for the two-point conversion, did not get it. Um, and Miami was not able to do anything after that. The afternoon game, game of the week, the Giants and Dallas. This was a good game. Dak Prescott, pretty solid performance. Giants pull it out 20-19 to as time expires on Dallas. Um, they're at the end of the fourth quarter, 
they are not able to spike the ball to stop the clock to get a potential game-winning field goal off. It would have been a very long field goal, but the clock runs out. The Giants get the first one down there in Jerry's house, 20-19. to And again, I got the Giants winning the division. Shout-out to my boy Billy Andrews. I know this is a big win for your G-men. Getting to watch it with your son for the first time this year as he's four or five months old now. So uh, big ups to my guy and his son getting to watch the Giants game together today. And then final game this afternoon, which I told you guys this game could go either way. Jeremy told you this is a game to really kind of stay away from because of that. The Lions squeak it out again, 39-35 in Indianapolis. This is a game the Lions should have had in the bag. Uh, They were up big in the first half. The Colts were bringing, you know, guys off the bench who hadn't played. They were already thin in the secondary. They had to bring new guys in just to get through the game. And, you know, we struggled the whole time, basically. Uh, Theo Riddick had a solid performance. I like the rushing touchdown from the rookie Washington. Prater's missed extra point. Really put this one in a position that we didn't want to be in. Uh, Indianapolis took the lead late with... Um, a little right around 40 seconds left in the game, 35 to 34, because we had missed an extra point. We got the ball back, drove it down. Our guys forgot that they needed to get out of bounds at any point during the drive, and they kept staying in bounds. We had to use our timeouts up, kicked a field goal to go up 37 to 35, kicked off. Indianapolis proceeded to try and throw the ball all over the field, trying to find a way that they could return the kick for the win. And in doing so, in the end zone, did an illegal forward pass, thus giving the Lions a safety, two more points, and the win, because the clock had run out, and that's the final play. So we win 39-35, and hey, we'll take it. That's 1-0 in the books. Uh, We're right there, still tied with Minnesota and Green Bay for the division lead. You know, no problems, no worries there. We'll take it. We're glad with it. Move on to next week. A win is a win. We got areas to improve on. Like I said, you want to be the team that wins, that has areas to improve instead of the team that loses and says, but what if or whatever, you know. So, moving on, tonight's game, it's getting started here pretty much in a few minutes. And we have the New England Patriots, Sands, Tom Brady going against the NFC West title champions from last season, the Arizona Cardinals. Should be a good game. It'll be closer than a lot of people think with Tom Brady and Gronkowski being out. Um, I do expect Arizona to have a nice showing tonight. I expect David Johnson to go off for 100 yards, maybe another 40 yards receiving. Um, I would take Arizona tonight in this game. So those are today's scores. That's what's going on right now. Tomorrow night, remember, we got Pittsburgh versus Washington in the early game and the Rams versus San Francisco in the late game tomorrow night. And we'll wrap up what happened there in Wednesday's show when it comes to those games. So it's the time in the show. Let's get to a few other headlines that are out there, shall we? All right, headlines. This one, Broncos country, you might be a little worried. Uh, He looked like he got a little hitch in his giddy-up when this happened in the game the other night. Demarius Thomas did have an MRI on his hip. (coughs) Excuse me. He will be getting a second opinion, but it it looks like he might be missing some time. There's no timetable being given right now until he does get this second opinion. Uh, But that could end up hurting the Broncos somewhat. Now, he wasn't targeted a whole lot the other night. Um, maybe that was because he was getting a little more of the coverage rolled his way. They weren't going to let him beat them. That was going to happen a lot this year. So Trevor Simeon's going to have to dish that ball around him more, a little more. You're going to see probably a little more Virgil Green. You're going to see more Emmanuel Sanders. Um, guys like this are going to have to start stepping up and making more plays. You might even see more tosses go to the way of the running backs in this next game here in seven more days. <laughs> Um, this one, WWE had an event down in uh, Southeast Asia somewhere. I think it was in Thailand. Big Show is wrestling John Cena. And Big Show has a move where he stands up on the second rope, bounces up and down, jumps backwards, and lands on the guy, basically. 
Now, we all know Big Show is called Big Show because he's huge. He's a huge man. They, WWE lists him at 7'4", 450, or 500 pounds. Now, he's not 7'4", because he's short.